Hey everyone, my name is Rune, and welcome back to Deadly Premonition. Last time, we made it into... I don't know what this place is called. Twin Peaks. <laughs> and today, we're going to continue on and, uh... Well, do whatever the game has to offer. First things first, though, I want to get a n nice new suit on. And I think I'm going to wear this one. <laughs> Um, this is one of those extra items that you can get. Like, it's one of the things that comes with the, uh, easier version. And this was the one I liked the most, weird weirdly enough. I think it's good looking. Or at least it's not terrible looking. Pants look kind of ugly from the, uh, view, but, like, when you actually play with it on, looks not, not too bad. Alright, let's go get some coffee. We really wanted some coffee. Good morning, Mr. Morgan. Your breakfast is ready for you. Thank you, Mrs. Polly Oxford. Just Polly is fine. Well then, thank you, Polly. I'm starving. Is everything all right, Mr. Morgan? Yes, it's delicious, Polly. My compliments to the chef. I'm hoping my cooking will bring back repeat guests. Honestly, though, it's been a while since anyone has stayed here. I couldn't help but notice. Aside from you and me, there seems to be no other guests or workers around. What's that? The salt's in that white shaker there. Thank you. I was wondering if there were any other guests or workers here. Oh, no, no one else. My husband and I used to run this place, but he's in heaven now. You've been working here alone since then. Must be hard by yourself. Oh my, we're all out of pepper. I'm very sorry. It must be difficult to run a hotel by yourself. Well, yes, I suppose. I could just live on my pension. But I have to admit, running a hotel is kind of like a hobby of mine. That's nice. Polly, it might help to hear you better if you could sit a little closer. Oh my, Mr. Morgan, you're embarrassing me. So early in the day, too. I think I'm a little too old for you. And I still love my departed husband. May God rest his soul. I appreciate the invitation, but I'm fine over here. Polly. I can hardly hear you from all the way over there. You're exaggerating. This is fine. It won't do to be all clumped together with such a large table and cafeteria. We have to make use of all this space. <sighs> now tell me, that wound on your face, what happened? Let's just say I had some trouble during the last case I was working on. I'm sure it'll heal. It's just a flesh wound. Oh my, well, there's no need to be the tough guy here. I want you to be able to relax here. I've prepared a special room for you. A famous rock star once stayed in the same room, you know. Really? I feel honored. If you need anything, anything at all, just let me know. I'll help you out in any way I can. Zach, the lady is offering to help. Do you want to ask her about the town? Say, Polly, what can you tell me about this town? Well, let me see. You might know this already, but the town is called Greenvale. It rains here quite often, but it's a nice place, surrounded with nature. It was a big and prospering lumber town until not so long ago. We used to have a population of over 6,000 people. Less than a tenth of them left now. This hotel was built back then. We saw plenty of guests in those days. Hmm. That's why this place is so big for such a small community. I have so many fond memories from back then. I suppose the clock on the community center is quite famous too. The clock? Oh yes, it's lovely. It rings in the morning and at night to let the whole town know the time. You'll hear it many times during your stay. It's a beautiful sound. And you'll love it too, I think. 
I look forward to hearing it then. Anything else you'd like to know about? Yes, actually, Polly. Could you tell me about the shops around here? Shops? Well, there aren't many. It is a small town, after all. You can do most of your shopping at the Milk Barn convenience store. The couple who run it are a unique pair. I'm sure you'll get to like them. The A&G Diner is a great place to eat. They might be open even if my kitchen is closed. If you want to go to a bar, there are two. The Galaxy of Terror and the Sweary 65. I don't care much for either of them. Bars are for the younger folk. We also have a gas stand, of course, the art gallery, and even a gunsmith. You should be able to find what you need. Thank you, Polly. Well, Mr. Morgan, I'd better start cleaning up. You just take it easy. I'll bring your coffee out in a moment. Thank you, Polly. I have to warn you, though, I am very particular about my coffee. The very best you have, please. I understand. I'll be right back with it. Did you see that, Zack? Clear as a crisp spring morning. F. K. In the coffee. I knew I could count on it. Never fails. Now then. Ah. Uh, let's get going. That smile. What a lady killer. <laughs> I like that the game actually gives reasoning as to why this place is so damn big. The town at one point was actually a pretty big and thriving uh, town. But after the lumber mill stopped working or something, I don't, that I don't get. But yeah, that's pretty cool. That's a cool little detail. Also, I like that um, <laughs> the uh, one of the bars is named after the guy who uh, developed or created this game, the director, Swery. That, that's, that's funny. I get the feeling we're going to see a lot of him in this game. But the fact that he's not really in it, maybe? I don't know. Small details can make a game a lot better. I like that. A police car. Office is open from nine to uh, nine to six, nine to four, nine to five, nine to five. <clears throat> Not used to military time. So we have King George to thank for preparing a car for me. A pleasant surprise, eh, Zach? Let's take it for a spin. Yeah. Oh God, I can't remember how bad these were. I have to tell you, Zach, this place simply amazes me the keys were left on the front hood and nobody stole the car values this town has what the country needs values let's head over to the sheriff's department okay uh change view headlights wait where are the headlights lights are x a to talk, wipers on and off, signal left or right, steer, honk. Okay. Pretty simple. I got a master key. And a flare. Why would I get a flare? Okay. It's first person. Oh, God. Oh, okay. That's drive. Okay. Ooh, God, this car. Okay. <laughs> wow, this is weird. <laughs> my horn that's my turn signal stop okay oh god this feels so weird okay wow 
Oh, hey, there's someone here. So what are we talking Oh. About those bonus features in DVDs nowadays. What? You know, the ones from the 80s have almost no bonus material. Even if they do, it's a trailer and the visual quality is pretty bad. Well, that visual quality is a good reminder of those days. So many new audio and visual appliances were coming out back then. Do you remember the first video deck we bought? We bought it to record one of the Star Wars movies on TV. And remember when that video store opened, we spent hours there, just trying to find a good movie to rent. There weren't that many to choose from back then. I remember renting some really bad ones after reading those back cover taglines. Hey, remember? Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, filmed in 1978. Produced, directed, written, and edited by John DeBello. It was really awful, but for some reason I still remember it pretty well. It had so many sequels, and the original was re-released in 95. The 87-minute long theatrical release bumped up to a whopping 90 minutes. But that was around the time I joined the Bureau. I never have a chance to see it. I know, Zack. Once this case is over, we can watch it together. I bet we can buy a copy on the internet pretty easily. What a, okay, that was a weird conversation. Also, I don't know where I'm going. That's one fine building for such a small town. The exterior woodwork is spectacular. Don't you agree, Zach? He's passed out. Standing up. Uh, uh... What? Oh. Pleasure to meet you, Agent Morgan. We've been expecting you. I'm Thomas McLean, the sheriff's assistant. <sighs> FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please just call me York. It's what everyone else calls me. Very well then, Agent Agent York. I believe I owe you a thank you for retrieving my belongings from my car. Thanks. Oh, no, no. Just doing my job. I just... Well, I want to help do everything I can to help the investigation. I just can't believe Anna was murdered. She was such a bright and lovely girl. Did you know her well? Well, no, not really. But it's a very small town. I'm sorry. It's just that this is the first really big case I've ever seen. I understand. Just try to relax. Can I have a look at Anna's file now? Y yes, of course. The sheriff told me to let you through to the meeting room, but... I've lost the key to the cabinet where the files are. Why don't you take a look around while I go look for it? Okay. Let me know when things are ready. Zach, Thomas appears to be the kind and sensitive type, totally at odds with the monarch. Almost a good setting for a cartoon. All the dialogue in this game is weird. Everyone in this game is weird. <laughs> okay. Well, we got a nice big sheriff's department to look around at. Surprisingly big for, like, such a small town. They've even got, like, regular uh, officers. Hmm, okay. Where are we going? Oh, here? Here? Why did I look at the door? Open the door. Hello? I really can't seem to find that key. What should I do? The sheriff isn't going to be happy. It has a southern flying squirrel key holder attached to it. I haven't seen it, have you? I have to- what? Do I need to help find something? What's this? The fuck did- why so specific with the key? What is this? Whoa. 
That is really high tech. Okay. Is there anything in these or what is this? Oh, that's a filing cabinet. Okay. Something about a southern flying squirrel. Let's uh, look around, I guess. Maybe we can find the key. Not a little detail in this place. It's kind of cool. What do we have here? Ponytailed flying squirrel. A key holder with a pointy-tailed flying squirrel attached to it. The key belongs to the sheriff's office. Oh, it's not a southern flying squirrel. So, not the key we're looking for. But it looks like it won't be hard to find it if we keep looking. Curly-tailed flying squirrel key. Curvy-tailed. Sure. Grab that one. Found a key. Agent York, did you find the key? I found a key. You found the key. Oh, I did? That's the right one. Oh, uh... Yes. A oh. Southern Flying Squirrel. Cool. Thank you so much. I'll bring the files right that in. That so was really lucky. Go to the meeting room. <laughs> that face. Okay. Oh my god. I'll be waiting for you. Well, Zach, we just got here and we've cracked a big case already. The case of the squirrel key. The victim's name was Anna Graham. Age 18, she just recently graduated from high school this year. Her dream was to move out to the city and become a model. But for the time being, she was working in the A&G diner here in town. She lived with her mother, Sally. Anna's father died in an accident in the lumber mill when she was a child. Her mother is unemployed and lives on the insurance money from her husband's accident. After all, it's a small town with a low cost of living. Financially, they seem to get by fine, and they led normal lives. A normal life is exactly what a curious teenager doesn't want. It's all starting to make sense, Zach. City folk, huh? No. No, I take that back. All of them can't be as bad as him. And some should have better manners. Huh. This is a good biscuit. I've never tasted a biscuit this delicious. Where in town can I get these? Well, actually... I... Well... I... I baked them myself. Hmm. That's amazing. What are you doing in law enforcement? I'm very particular about biscuits, I'll have you know. The balance of milk and butter you've achieved here. Oh my. Agent Morgan. My god. This game. You are welcome to accompany me to the Greenvale General Hospital. Emily, you come too. Thomas, stay here and tidy up these files. Y yes, sir. We're going to use the car outside. Let's get going. You might think this is just a small town police investigation, but our inspections are thorough and solid. I'm hoping you won't slow us down. <laughs> the the like unnecessarily long like moment there where he's like holding up the biscuit. <laughs> what was the point of that? The Greenvale General Hospital is down the road by the lake. It's too far to walk. Come on, get in the car. If I'm riding in a car, George, I prefer to be the driver. Can you provide a car for me? What are you talking about? You don't even know how to get there. Which is another good reason for me to drive, George. I need to learn my way around town. Oh, man. Very well. Then I'll ride with you. I want to keep an eye on you. Fair enough. Just one thing, Agent Morgan. Your involvement in this case is limited. That means you don't have to learn your way around town. 
okay. George, we'd better get moving. The hospital closes at 2100. We got a ton of time though, right? Let's get in the car. You know, uh, York is being kind of good about cooperating with them. I don't know why he's so pissy about it. Get us there quickly, but drive within the speed limit. Just because you have a badge doesn't mean you can drive like a maniac. George, what are you, his mother? We just need to get the autopsy results. Agent York isn't accustomed to the town yet. Give him a little slack. <sighs> this facial animations. I swear to God. <laughs> well then, Agent York. Let's okay, go. actually, just sure. the animations Sounds in general. Good. Like, <laughs> what was the point of that? Okay. Isn't this the car they gave me? Wouldn't it be weird for me not to drive the car they gave me? I can't help noticing you prefer to work alone. Most of the time, yes. Don't you get lonely? Flying all over the country alone? I must say I've never felt lonely. Are you married? Unfortunately, relationships and I are fleeting strangers. I don't get on very well with women. You might be surprised to hear. That's because you're young. You notice things like that at my age. You have to treat women carefully, like a thin crystal wine glass. If you don't, they can cut scars on your face, just like yours, right? Uh, George, is this an interrogation? I see you're a seasoned professional. Uh, but let's not talk about my scar. It was caused by a problematic woman. Well, she got you good. Terribly good. It'll fade away, and nobody will notice it in a week. A week? It's not that light of a wound. A pretty light wound. So, Where the Emily, fuck am I? Tell me, <laughs> is there really a need for a full-time sheriff in a small town like this? I'm sure it is small to your city eyes, but any gathering of people leads to all kinds of problems. Fights, runaways, stray pets. You're too fixated on violent crimes. Our job is to guide the people along the correct path, first and foremost. Now that's what I consider to be my duty as the sheriff of Greenvale. Zach, there he is. The monarch in all his glory. Kind of makes me glad that I wasn't born here. Did you say something, Agent Morgan? No, nothing, George. <laughs> I was just reflecting on a little history. Well, we're in the middle of a homicide investigation. Keep your mind on the matter at hand. Okay, which right now is driving. That's a pretty big hospital. I guess they wanted to be ready for uh, town-wide food poisoning? No, no. It's another leftover from the town's prosperous slumber days. Hard to imagine now, though, isn't it? My mother always talked about how energetic this town used to be. Almost like a gold rush, she used to say. Impressive. But the hotter the fever, the faster it cools. And so now there's hardly anyone left to use this place. It pains me to watch my hometown lose so many citizens. Beyond your understanding, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sorry to say that it is. Indeed. And that's why this case is our problem. There really isn't any need for you to get too involved. He's not a fan of me. Sheriff. Freckly Fiona. Hi there, Fiona. We're here to see Usha. Do you know where he is? I think Dr. Johnson is in the computer room. A computer room? In a hospital? <laughs> nice to meet you, Mr. FBI agent. The computer room is where our employees share a computer. Very nice to meet you, too. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. How did you know I was FBI? <laughs> Easy. None of the police in this town wear cologne. Besides, that... that scar on your face is the biggest rumor in town. Rumors get exaggerated as they spread, even in the countryside. What's that you're reading, if I may ask? Wires House? You haven't heard of this yet? It's a recent bestseller mystery. It's set in the U.S. 
a small traditional North American town close to the Canadian border. A peaceful, traditional place. However, that peaceful town is shattered by a terrible crime. The murder of a local girl. And that incident causes grief and sadness to everyone in town. But everyone feels the seditious, heinous, evil still lurking, alive. Yes, much like the situation right now here in Greenvale. Fiona, don't say that. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. With Anna dead and all. Don't worry. Books are written to entertain, and it's good you're enjoying it. What we're faced with here is a terrible crime committed in a real world. Much different from that of a novel. So there's no need to apologize. Thank you, Agent York. Okay. Um, again with the random, pointless dialogue. Okay, Emily, what's up? Oh, what's going on? What? Okay, never mind. Never mind. Uh, computer room. Um, where's that? Hey, who are you, buddy? Okay, never mind. Check the weather. Today is fine. Clear day. A perfect day to have a walk. Yeah, it definitely wasn't raining. <laughs> we go here? Is this where we need to go? I don't know where I'm going. We couldn't find him. Fiona needs to check her information. No, I don't think so. Does the doctor like playing games by any chance? What do you mean? <laughs> There's a message on the computer. And a card key already set in place. The king passes the rook and meets the bishop. The knight takes a pawn along for the queen. What does that all mean? It's a simple puzzle. Zach, let's take him up on his challenge. You can do this, right? What? A knight passes rook and meets bishop. Knight takes a pawn to queen. What? Knight, king passes rook and meets bishop. <laughs> I play, I've played uh, chess before, but I'm uh, not 100% sure what I'm supposed to be doing here. King passes rook and meets bishop. Knight takes a pawn to queen. Queen? I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Wait, really? That's it? <laughs> You're just supposed to, okay. Uh, king to rook to bishop. Knight. Pawn to queen. There you go. <laughs> that, that was it? Okay. Um, I had to look it up because the phrasing was weird. I thought you were playing against him, but no, you were just... Putting them in order. Awaits below with the deceased. Another code? But there's nowhere to insert a password. More games. I'm going to get Fiona to call Usha up here right now. Uh, he's no need, George. What? Uh... The message appeared with the card key. It's telling us where to use it. This is not the time to. It be literally means he's in the like. Uh, Doctor Usha is below with the deceased, with Anna. Below being underground, I take it. Simple. Simple. <laughs> what? How are they? How? Fucking clueless. It's time to meet the mischievous architect of this little game. Nah. Okay. Let's go. All right, let's go say hi to the doctor. Oh, nope, maybe not. Asha, sorry to keep you waiting. Ah, you made it. Let's get started, shall we? This is Agent Morgan from the FBI. 
Hmm, nice to meet you. I'm Usher Johnson, the doctor in this hospital. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me York. Everyone calls me that. Very well, Agent York. Are you a forensic practitioner? Let's just say I've dealt with corpses before. That battle of wits, by the way. Did you create that yourself? Mm-hmm. I just wanted to see if our FBI agent could handle the task. <laughs> I see. Well, it was pretty fun. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. We don't have much time. We need those autopsy results. Next time, try challenging us without obstructing an investigation. You've angered the monarch. <sighs> From the onset of rigor mortis, the stiffening of the muscles, the time of death is estimated to be between 20 and 2200 hours. Uh, that's still quite early for the crime to take place. Note that there are two exterior wounds, pressure marks around the neck, and a long cut running from chest to abdomen. Blood marks on her right hand tell us she was gripping something round in her right hand. Her skull is also fractured, but that is unrelated to the cause of death. It probably happened to her after she was killed. Now, I first thought death by suffocation due to the marks on her neck. But after further investigation, I now have a different conclusion. The direct cause of death was loss of blood from the wound. Which means? She was cut up while she was still alive. Yes, uh, a sharp knife was used. It was inserted beneath the sternum and then quickly sliced downwards. Ugh. The excessive loss of blood from her internal organs is what actually killed her. Her nails are clean, and with no skin cells from the attacker. She also doesn't appear to have been bound nor badly beaten. She was apparently killed without resistance. Hmm. The most tragic thing, however, was that she was unable to speak her story to anyone who could hear her cries. The perpetrator cut out Hannah's tongue. Oh. I believe she was drugged first to phase her consciousness, and then the killer killed her. Now, the killer most likely has a deep, traumatized past concerning women. He probably cannot converse with them normally. Cutting out the tongue suggests a very lonely individual. Either that, or a truly hardcore sadist. He must get off on watching women suffer, especially when they can't answer back. Now, he watched as the blood pumped from her body, as she gradually grew cold. Now, a case in Seattle in 1985 was much like... Usha, please, limit your report to your findings as a doctor. Criminal profiling is my job. <laughs> the audio cut out really randomly there. Also. Anna died fully, deeply, painfully aware of what was happening to her. But, uh... Tell me, what time did it stop raining on the night Anna was killed? That's a really specific uh, question. Just before I went to bed, right after the movie on TV ended, so... Around 1 a.m.? What movie was it? <laughs> An American Werewolf in London. Uh, directed by John Landis, 1989. <laughs> what? Stop! So the rain stopped, accompanied by the ending song, Blue Moon. 
Oh my God, George, would you? Why does that matter? Examined Anna myself. What more do you hope to find? I'm sure I mentioned that I have a personal interest in cases like these. Uh. Okay. She's neatly wearing fake fingernails. Okay. Uh, traces of evaporated liquid around the eyes. Must have been crying before she was murdered. Yeah. How? She's got like a scar on her hand. Judging from the impression, she was holding something in her hand, but it was removed around six hours after death. The object was circular with a relief shaped like a piece mark. Interesting. Toes. And his body is lying on the table. Thanks. Uh, what else am I looking at? The tongue has been removed. Looks like the edge of the stump. The tongue has been removed. Look at the edge of the stump. Oh. I did something. From her lack of resistance, I'd say that Anna's injuries happened very quickly. Unable to speak, she was then left to cry herself to death. Zach, it's all starting to come together. The perpetrator stayed with her for at least two hours until it stopped raining. At the estimated time of her death, it was still raining, but you can still see tear marks on her cheeks. That means she was killed under a roof somewhere. Hmm. She was then carried into the woods after it stopped raining. Hmm. <clears throat> there, there's one other thing. Her tongue was removed with a very blunt knife. In fact, it's more likely it was simply chopped off. Asha, are you a passionate man? Well, not particularly, I'm a, but I am man enough should the moment call for it. George, how about you? I'm very passionate, yes. Especially when it comes to women. But I don't see what that has to do with anything. George, the perpetrator is just like you. He's passionate about women. He's a passionate kisser. This was a kiss of death. Ah, the perpetrator bit off Anna's tongue. What? We'll never get a dental print from a wound like this. But this is still a big lead. Oh! Why? Why? That's oh. Oh. Pod, Zach. A shame, but our old-time all-American sightseeing tour just came to an end. This case is now under the jurisdiction of the FBI. I'm assuming command. I'll need you to assist me in the investigation. What in the hell do you mean, Agent Morgan? I know I said I was passionate, but you can't think I did this. That's not why I'm assuming command, George. You're a suspect just as much as every other passionate man on Earth. Let me show you something. Wow, that's a lot. I'm sure you have a lot of questions, but most of the details are top secret. George, Emily, we should be going. No need to stay here any longer. Okay. I have to sign the release. Just give me a moment. Very well. I'll go on ahead. I can't take it any longer down here. Bishop takes Queen. His rook takes your queen, and your knight takes rook. And checkmate. Huh? Oh. Oh, 
my first victory in the Grandmaster ranking. <laughs> he was playing a computer. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, things got bad. Uh, <laughs> Zach, they're here. Um, okay. Well, I think I'm going to end the episode off here, guys. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time for some more Deadly Premonition as we deal with this. <laughs> Goodbye.